Ever since I was a kid, Southeastern Oregon has had a special place in my imagination. It's vast and it's mysterious. That sense of mystery is what I've never been able to escape. So of course, it draws me back now and then. Where we're going is about as far as you can get from the populated parts of the state. A place with open roads and distant skylines where visitors are about as scarce as water. You really can go for days without seeing another soul. I'm here with Matt Kleskowski and some of the On One crew on a multi-episode on-location road trip that began at the Painted Hills. Our destination today is the Alvord Desert, one of those places you have to experience to believe. The Alvord is a dry, alkali lake bed in the rain shadow of the Steens mountain range. I've been here several times, and I still get goosebumps when I get out onto the playa. It always takes a few minutes to take it all in, but it doesn't take long for me to want to grab my camera and start shooting. We arrived in the middle of the day when you don't usually expect to get great photographs, but today a cloud layer had rolled in that kept things interesting. And the way these clouds were setting up, it looked like we could be in for a great evening. So we started to make moves towards possible locations for sunset. The trick in a place like this is finding good foregrounds. The Alvord is huge, but most of it looks pretty much the same. And as photographers, we always want several options for sunset. So we decided that the distant side of the playa would probably give us the most bang for our buck. Of the 84 square miles of desert that stretched in front of us, Matt and I, of course, picked the same spot for our first shots. I've never come home from the Alvord without at least a few great images. After tonight, it looks like this trip won't be the exception. The clouds made for a great sunset, but they meant there wouldn't be any stars, just hot drinks and good conversation by the fire. If you're the person selling that photo to a stocking. So you ever, ever go out on one of these landscape shoots and you come back with like 200 images of exactly the same <laughs> thing at different but, apertures? Yeah, for some reason, we get out there and we think, Wow, I'm gonna surround this with every aperture possible. Like, let me try f8. Let me try f11, f16, f13, f1.8, f14 and a half. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and you, and you do. I think a lot of. I, I hope I'm not the only one. No. But you come back and you come back with 200 photos of the same exact thing. Maybe the lights change in a little bit, mm -hmm. but you come back with 200 photos of the same exact thing. Well, the clouds have changed a little bit. I better hit every aperture yeah. one more time. So I think you know. One of the things that we did here was um, last night we kind of knew it was going to be a clear morning, mm -hmm. which I tend to bring clear skies with me wherever I go. Uh, we knew it was going to be a clear morning, and we kind of almost had a plan. So the the plan was there's these nice mountains that are off to the west, west. and we knew that... The sun always rises in the east. The sun rises in the east, yeah. I learned that on this trip, by the way. <laughs> um, but we knew that, the, you know, the, that first light's going to hit the tip and the very peaks of these mountains and that could be a nice shot and then after that's done right now you can turn around now you can get a different shot back there of the sun just peeking over mm -hmm. and then from there now you've got all these patterns in the ground that get sunlight and they start to cast little shadows. If I could offer any advice, it's that when that sun first comes up and when that first happens, shoot it for a minute, maybe two minutes, and then it's done, it's go over. somewhere else. And yeah. so we did, we hopped back in the car and we went to the place where we wanted to last night. It had these really um, cool, really curled patterns in the, in the playa. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't work out as well as we hoped, but we still got some pretty cool storytelling images, some stuff to, to throw in an e-book as an you know, illustration of where we and are. And coffee. Yeah. Which, coffee. by the way, this, this cup doesn't have any coffee in it. It's, it's a prop, much like the fire. 
Matt so, needs something to hold I, on I to. I just had to have something to hold on to, but it's it's empty. But it was uh, good. And so, and then I think the biggest, so the biggest hurdle is, is you get back and you have 200 photos. Mm -hmm. um, we know a lot of people are using, are using Lightroom. I use Lightroom. Um, I use it's, Lightroom. On the front end, it's not so fast for looking at those 200 photos. So that's where I would jump into the, the fast, the, the perfect browse, but you know, the fast preview. Stuff. Fast that's, preview. I think that's what we really want is we want to look through them quick. Get rid of the ones that are obvious deleters. Yes. Which and not even I mess with building, building full previews in Lightroom. Yeah. No, yeah. At that point, we don't need to. So just let me mark the favorite ones. Yep. And then I can take them to that next stage, moving in, into Lightroom. And, and put them into Lightroom, create a collection, and go to work. Absolutely. So obviously, Matt and I spend a lot of time on these images in Lightroom and on one's perfect photo suite. Look for the Perfect Inspiration video where I go over that in depth using some of these very images. So check that out, and I'll see you here next time. We'll be at the Alvord Desert again, taking advantage of clear skies to shoot stars.